This is a great evening for two reasons. One, we celebrate the ascension of our Lord into heaven. It reminds us of our journey to heaven itself. And right after that, we'll celebrate the graduation of our eighth graders from our school. A great reason to gather together this evening. The psalmist writes, God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. We continue with the opening hymn, hymn number 491, Up Through Endless Ranks of Angels. This is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Better in one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The first reading for the ascension of our Lord is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. The Epistle is from Ephesians, chapter 1. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places." far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you were clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, 
and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It's written, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. And lawlessness is all that we do against the holy law of God. Therefore, let us hear this law of God as given in the Ten Commandments. We shall repeat together. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Let us confess our faith in the one true God who created us, redeemed us, from all sin and death and the power of the devil, and sanctified us in his truth. Therefore we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And having this faith and life and salvation by the grace and truth of Christ our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We go on to the hymn of the day. Please note that there is a reversal of the top two portions of the hymn. And that's the top two uh, bars of music. If you reverse those around, you'll sing them in the right order. And you'll see that there's a one, two, three, four uh, in the second place should be up in the first place. Hopefully we'll figure that out together. So let us sing the hymn of the day, hymn number 493, a hymn of glory. Let us sing. You may be seated.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. But that isn't all. So too is he ascended. But where? Exactly where we confessed. The third day he rose again and ascended into heaven. Isn't that where every soul desires to be in heaven? Do we not all deep down desire a better place to live, whether apart from this world or even in it? World peace, we say. Or always trying to make the world a better place. Or even if I die, I want to be sure that I've left the world in a better place. The fantasy of a human utopia right here on earth. All want a better place to live. All want a paradise. But where does this come from? Most likely from the faint shadows within our hearts of a past knowledge and life that once belonged to our earthly first parents. The fantasy shadows of a paradise lost. A relationship broken. Ask anyone and most likely they will say that they believe in a heaven. They believe in a blessed life after death. And ask them why, and most likely you will not find a concrete reason other than an assumption that surely there must be something else after this life, otherwise life itself would not make any sense. We all want to believe in a greater good, but can only assume at best, because no one has really seen it, or have they? Some say they have, in a death or a near-death experience, and have even written, uh, even written books about it. But who can really be certain? The fact that such books become bestsellers tells us that people really want to know the question, is there really a heaven? And if there is, what is it like? And so they look and they search everywhere except the one place that truly reveals it to us, the Bible. Then ask them if they will go to heaven. And I'm sure many will answer that they hope so. And I know a few will answer that I know so. And still some may even answer, well, probably not. And you won't find any consensus on the answer. And this makes sense because in our modern age, truth is relevant only to the person, meaning that the topic of heaven or anything like that really is only a matter of what we believe for ourselves or about it for ourselves. As many people as there are then in this world, if we believe that way, then so too as many heavens. However, I would venture that among the common people of the world, there would be one matter of heaven that we would find probably a good amount of agreement on. And that is, and that is how we get there. Since heaven is often thought of that better place, it must then stand to reason that it is for better or good people. Therefore, in one form or another, the answer will always come back as a matter of how good a person is or how much good that person has done, perhaps in making this world a better place. So heaven then is looked upon as a reward for good behavior, good people who deserve a better life. And in the church, if we're honest, we call this works righteousness or Self-righteousness, the good that we do for God in order to keep ourselves with Him. And this belief is found within Christianity as well, even though Scripture clearly condemns it because we know from Jesus' own mouth there was only one way, and He is the way and the truth and the life. And therefore, how important it is our observance of Christ's ascension into heaven. For in it we see without a doubt that there is a heaven, and likewise how we get there. Just look to the one who actually ascended there, all eyes on Jesus. Does he then not know the way if he ascends into heaven? And did he not ascend? 
How unfortunate that this holy day, the day of ascension, is so often overlooked and underappreciated even by the Christian church. Why is that? One reason may be that it doesn't lend itself so easily to commercialization as happened to Christmas or Easter with presents and basketfuls of candy. Nothing to excite and to attract the old Adam in us. Nor does Ascension Day have its own season of services like Advent that leads to Christmas or Lent that leads to Easter. And yet, I believe that the Ascension of our Lord is the third of the greatest three festivals in the Christian church. See how they fit together. Christmas, celebrating the very fact that God becomes man in Jesus Christ, taking on human flesh and blood to be our Savior. And Easter celebrating that fact in the suffering and the death of Jesus for the for forgiveness of our sins. And then rising again on the other side to die no more. But that's not all. Then comes ascension. Celebrating the return to heaven of Christ our Savior at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is our substitution. He comes to take our place, so watch where he goes. Where he goes, he also takes us with him, he says. From his baptism in the Jordan, to the cross on Calvary, through death in the grave, rising again to stand upon the earth, and then ascending into heaven. Jesus didn't take on our flesh and blood simply to have a tangibly earthly fling with us. He came to take our flesh and blood in order to purge it of all sin and glorify it and take it to heaven. Heaven is for real because Jesus crucified, risen, and ascended is for real. And so to the fact that that he does so, so that you can be where he is forever. He showed himself to Peter, then to the twelve, then to more than 500 brothers, and then to James, and then to all the apostles to whom he said, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Witnesses of what? His ascension, heaven, even to our modest city, Fort Wayne. Their witness has traveled all the way here over 2,000 years just to get to you. And then finally, the same Jesus, after he ascended, showed himself to Paul. Why to all of these? So that seeing they may believe and be with him where he goes. And so here to this night in the gospel reading, does he ascend before our very eyes, so watch him. Keep your eyes on Jesus. For where he goes, so too does he take you. The apostles see him ascend, and they see to where he ascended. For a moment, they were allowed to glimpse into heaven itself. How cool is that? But why? Because heaven is for real. And it's our eternal home. And he did not check his humanity at the gate, but he took it with him. Heaven is for us redeemed humans. So, there really is life after death. The resurrection proves this. There are eyewitnesses. And there really is a place called heaven after life in this world. Christ's ascension proves it. There are eyewitnesses. The apostles saw both. They beheld the glorified body of Jesus made ready for heaven. And they saw the heavenly places where God will take those glorified bodies to himself, including yours. 
The grave then is not the end. Death does not have the last say. Sin does not rule. The devil does not persist. All find their end in Christ, who is the Lord of life. None shall remain to dwell in heaven. None can touch us there. None can cause us to fall again. And they are all swallowed up in Christ and spit out forever into the darkness of that great eternal abyss. Therefore, the ascension of Jesus teaches us that heaven is for real. And so too then our hope for it. We do not hope for nothing, but for everything. And why not? We have seen it through the eyes of the apostles. Though we cannot even begin to conceive of what God has really prepared for us up there, it does remain a mystery, but for good reason. It is to be a nice surprise, an exceedingly great gift that God himself will unwrap for us on the last day, and you will not be disappointed. So, 2020 graduates of Ascension Lutheran School. You are on a journey more than you know. You carry in you that hope that transcends this world and life and gives eternal meaning and significance and value to your lives in everything that you do here in time. Never lose what you have received here. You are on a journey to that same heaven. It is what our church and school is about and prepares you for. Not only to be a productive, God-pleasing person and living a God-pleasing life in this world, but even more so through this world until the time you reach the end. The narrow gate, actually the beginning. Heaven's cloud in which you meet your ascended Savior and so too shall ascend to your heavenly Father. As we so love to say, out of the small catechism, amen, amen means yes, yes, it shall be so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Thanks and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your triumphant ascension into heaven, by which we know that your work of redemption is finished and mansions are prepared for us in which we shall be your associates forever. Draw our affections after you, that dying to this world, we may look to those things which are above. Grant the light of your gospel to those sitting in darkness and spread your kingdom to the remotest isles. And this we ask in your holy name. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our graduates, that they may continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of God's word, that they may serve the Lord well and usefully, developing their talents not for their own sakes, but to God's glory and for the welfare of their neighbor, and that the Lord give his holy angels charge over them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn, hymn number 534, Lord enthroned in heavenly splendor.
Before we begin our recognition of our graduates this year, I'd like to send out a special thank you to Mary, our principal, and Dr. Eifert, who is a math teacher, a religion teacher. He does our music, and he played for us tonight. You can see that we're losing very valuable people to our school, and yet we have been so blessed by them that we're thankful for their faithful service to both our church and our school. Obviously, this is their last year at Ascension as they begin a new journey at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Sibawang. Is that right? Sibawang? Sibawang, Michigan. Well, you could have picked a better place, at least for me to pronounce. But in all seriousness, we truly wish them every blessing in God and Godspeed on this new journey that they're going to be on. Thank you so much for what you have done. Now, social distancing keeps us from thanking them appropriately, but nevertheless, our hearts go out to you, and we're very grateful. So, Mary, would you please go ahead and come forward for the graduation portion? Okay, um, this was actually our scheduled graduation night. It was supposed to be tonight during after the service. So when they canceled school in March for the rest of the year, I wasn't sure how we were gonna keep getting together and I'm so grateful that this night can come off even though we are socially distanced apart. Um, I am grateful to be here and have all of you here and have this opportunity to uh, talk about these great eighth graders. What a year, huh? Way to end, kind of unusual, very unusual. Um, this group of kids is uh, kind of near and dear to my heart. They were stuck with me as a teacher for a quarter in sixth grade. Um, I've spent lots of time with them doing lots of Lots of counseling and talking and corralling and um, encouraging, but also rejoicing. Rejoicing in all of the great things that they can do and what they've done. This group of kids has so many skills and abilities and lots of untapped potential. And even though I'm not going to be nearby, I am looking forward to hearing about all of the great things that they do in their future. Um, they have so much to, to give. And they finished out strong. Um, even with this remote learning, some of them scared us just a little bit, a little bit quiet, but um, they, they finished out strong, really pulled it out in the end, and we are so excited for them and glad that we can gather together today. Um, I would like, at this point, to introduce Lily Waters. Lily has the honor of being the class valedictorian which means in her time here, she has, they've all worked very hard, but she has achieved the highest grade point average in the class, um, which gave her the honor of writing a speech. I'm sure she was excited about that. Um, so I am going to bring this, without making too much noise, over to Lily, who will share her words. Good evening, friends, family, teachers, and staff. It's very exciting to be able to come together tonight and celebrate our eighth grade class graduating. Tonight, I was asked to come up here and talk about our school, church, and my class. A lot of years of stress, hard work, and perseverance led up to tonight. The years of elementary and middle school went by very fast, and so will the next four years. This school and class has been absolutely amazing, and I will miss everyone here. I am very thankful for our church and school because it has given our class the opportunity to grow in faith and knowledge. Throughout the time that I have been in Ascension, I have seen the school expand and make more room for future classes. The staff here has done a great job teaching and encouraging us to always do our best, so thank you for everything. I am also very thankful for you all, especially those whom I have known since preschool. 
and I hope that even when we go our separate ways, we will stay together and stay in contact. Although this is the end of our time together as a class, it is a brand new beginning. We will meet new people, make new friends, learn new things, and make more memories. I've made memory memories here at Ascension, and one that stands out to me is from seventh grade when we went on the field trip to Toledo. We stopped at a park. We were all just hanging out, having fun, and playing ultimate frisbee. Shout out to Mr. Scott for playing with us also. My hope for the other kids still at Ascension is that they will make as many good memories as our class has made. I also hope that they will grow close and have a lot of laughs. Here's to the eighth grade class of 2020. All right. Well, at this point, we typically pass out diplomas. We're not passing out diplomas this year. Um, they were already in the pews with the students, but I am going to take a moment with each of the graduates and ask them to stand and say a few things about them. Um, Mrs. Scare, their classroom teacher, had them create a PowerPoint, which I did email home to you this morning. Um, and in that PowerPoint, they were to put things like how long they've been here. I was actually, I didn't realize how many had been here since preschool. It's a lot of them. Um, but they also talked about where they're going for high school and their favorite Bible verse. So I used some of those things and the information that I have to share with you. So um, when I call your name, eighth grader, if you would please stand up and stay standing until I'm done talking about you. It won't last too long, I promise. Alexia Anders. Lexi's been here seven years at Ascension. She plans to go to Schneider High School. Her favorite Bible verse is 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. Lexi did receive a special award. Um, she received the President's Award of Outstanding Academic Achievement. That award is given to a student who has a grade point average of 90 or above. So in Lexi's packet, she also had a special certificate and a pin to commemorate that special achievement. Great job, Lexi. All right. Kaden Bell. 11 years at Ascension. At least that's what his paperwork said. That's a long time. Wow. Um, Kaden plans to go to Concordia Lutheran High School. And the Bible verse that he has chosen was from 2 Timothy 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Nice job, Caden. Cameron Horan. Cameron has been at Ascension just a year and a half, but she is an integral part of the class. She is planning to go to Schneider High School, and her Bible verse that she chose was from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Congratulations, Cameron. Evan Johnson. Evan has been at Ascension 10 years. His Bible verse is Romans 1, verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Congratulations, Evan. <laughs> Riley Marquardt, the man in the suit tonight. 10 years at Ascension. Um, he plans to be homeschooled next year. And his favorite Bible verse is Revelations 2, verse 10. Be faithful unto death, and he will give you the crown of life. Congratulations, Riley. <laughs> Arkadin McDaniel, also known as Alex. Alex has been at Ascension three years. His Bible verse that he chose was Matthew 22, 37. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. 
Congratulations, Alex. <laughs> Jana McWilliams, 11 years at Ascension. Plans to go to Concordia Lutheran High School. Her Bible verse chosen was Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledging him and he will make straight your paths. And Jana also received the President's Award for Outstanding Academic Achievement. She too has her certificate and a pin for maintaining a grade point average of 90 or better. Congratulations, Jana. <laughs> Carrington Merkler. Carrie is our class salutatorian this year. She um, was instrumental in writing the prayer that Pastor Will closes with today. And um, Carrie was actually, Carrie and Lily, um, had the honor, well, should have the honor, of attending an honors breakfast from the Allen County Non-Public School Association. But the honors breakfast got canceled. Um, but there is a medal and a certificate coming. They ordered them late because they were hoping we could have the breakfast, and it didn't happen. Um, Carrie's been at Ascension 11 years. She plans to go to Leo High School. Be still and know that I am God is her Bible verse from Psalm 4610. Um, Carrie received the Outstanding Academic Excellence Award, a little bit different. Um, it is also a grade of 90, grade point of 90 or above, but it also has high achievement on our Indiana state exams in math or reading. Um, she too has her certificate and a pin with her materials. Great job, Carrie. <laughs> Vanessa Sagi, 10 years at Ascension. Northrop High School is where she's headed. Um, from Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive, together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Vanessa received the Outstanding Academic Achievement Award, the President's Award, with a grade point average of 90 or better. Congratulations, Vanessa. <laughs> Ashley Tucker. Ashley arrived at Ascension when I did, from Texas, too. So we had a bond right from the beginning. Um, Ashley's been here six years. She plans to attend Carroll High School. Her Bible verse is Psalm 46.1. God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Ashley received the President's Award of Outstanding Academic Achievement for the grade point average of 90 or above. And Ashley was also chosen by Mrs. Scare to receive the Citizenship Award. This award is for one that exhibits good citizenship at home, school, and in the community. And Ashley certainly exemplifies that. Another certificate and pin in there for you as well. Congratulations, Ashley. <laughs> Lily Waters gets to stand again. Class valedictorian and also will receive a medal and a certificate from the Allen County Mountain Public School Association for being valedictorian here at Ascension. She's been here 10 years, plans to attend Carroll High School. Her Bible verse chosen was Joshua 1 verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Like, uh, sorry, Lily received the Outstanding Academic Excellence for a grade point average of 90 or above and the high achievement in the state math or reading tests. Great job, Lily. <laughs> And Olivia Williams. Olivia's been at Ascension five years. Can't believe it's been that long, five years. Um, Olivia plans to go to Lakewood Park Christian High School. Her Bible verse chosen was Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things th through him who gives me strength. Congratulations, Olivia. <laughs> all right, we'd like all of the graduates to stand, please. All of you at one time, giving you exercise. You haven't had PE class in a while, okay? Those of you that are present, parents, friends, faculty, staff, 
This class has gone through a lot. They've completed their course of study. They, even in these unusual circumstances, they do have their diplomas with them. And it is an honor to represent Ascension and present to you the 2020 Ascension graduates. Congratulations. <laughs> Have a seat. Just a couple of quick announcements because I can never leave without announcements. Um, please make sure all of the items in your pews, you take those with you when you leave. Um, the flowers that graduates are for you as well for your special day. Um, it is encouraged if you would exit out this door right over here. Sometimes we don't even realize there's a door over there. It takes you right out to the parking lot, although it's raining, so suggestion. Um, the class PowerPoints, as I referred to earlier, will be shared um, out with our school newsletter tomorrow for others to see as well. So I'm really pleased that you got that finished and it's a great representation of you. And next week, Wednesday morning, there is a closing chapel service. Um, students that are in attendance will be getting the packets that you just got, um, but we would love to have you there. There is a sign-up sheet also in the newsletter that's coming out tomorrow morning. So if you would like to come, you may. Pastor, you have a closing prayer? Yes. Thank you. Our closing prayer tonight was prepared for us by our salutatorian, Carrie Merkler. So we close together. Please rise. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for this amazing class that you have given to us, for all the friendships and relationships throughout the whole class. Lord, give them strength to face this new chapter in their lives. Keep them firm in the faith and in your word. The devil will fight with strength, but you, O oh Lord, are stronger than he, and, he will, and you will protect them and continue to protect them throughout their lives. So, Lord, be with them and this whole school. You have blessed us with so many amazing students here who will continue to grow in your holy word. In your glorious name, amen. He has ascended. He has ascended indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and serve the Lord.